one joy of YouTube and filming is that 99% of the time you never see the lower half of people. You can wear whatever you want. Hey guys, welcome back to another bookish video. So I made a video back on July 8th of 2018 called DNF the Cruel Prince book talk. So today I actually want to go back to this subject because I've actually recently finished The Cruel Prince because if there's one thing I am really good at it is giving books a second chance. There are a lot of times where I force books upon myself because I feel the need to get through things quickly and get lots of books out there and read and done and just consumed that I find that I end up not liking things that I actually did like. So today we are going to do that with The Cruel Prince because I did actually finish it this time. So I feel like I should talk about it and I should talk about my old video. So that's partly what we're going to do today. We're going to watch some of that old video and I'm going to talk about things in that old video that I either agree with still or don't agree with. This is a rant video. I still do rant videos me of 2018 so i tend to get through them rather quickly between audiobooks and physically reading and ebooks and good to know i still do the rambling as far as i listen to audiobooks and i get through them quickly i was totally there when i found out cool prince was all about a girl who ends up having to go live with the fairy who murdered her parents that basis still sounds like an awesome book. I think it could have been executed better, but it still sounds awesome. And I got to about chapter seven ish, and I hit that, and I just didn't care. I was not invested in the story. For me personally, there were too many details. I wasn't all that excited. I still stand by that. I still stand by the fact that it dragged and that there were too many details. I do believe the second half of the book is a lot better about the whole details thing. Obviously it's hard with a first book in this series because you have to give the information and the details and get people acclimated to the world and understand what's happening and what's going on along with giving background to your characters so that way people actually feel connected and invested in what they're experiencing. But I feel like it could have been executed better. I think that, especially when it comes to fantasy stories, in some ways you have to just dive right in and you have to just wait for your reader to catch up because if you spend too much time explaining, people get bored and they don't want to have you tell them every last little detail. They want to just know the world and experience it. For example, because it still sticks out in my head, is in the beginning she talks about how Jude likes fish sticks with ketchup. It's one of those random details that we would have been totally fine not knowing. I understand why it's there because it makes Jude more personable, it makes you like her more, and I might be quoting that completely wrong. It might not be Jude that with the fish sticks, but I just remember the fish sticks. The fish sticks are what stick out to me. I understand why it's there. It's just not entirely necessary to what happens later in the story. But at 60%, I am so underwhelmed and so frustrated that I just have no desire to keep reading this story. I stand by the fact that the first 60% of this book is not that interesting. It's not that good. And I used good as a relative term because that doesn't describe anything. It's just a blanket statement. But again, going back to my previous point about explaining, I believe the first 60% of this story could have been better. And that's frustrating because when you give such an awesome premise, it makes the reader really engaged and they want to know what's happened and what's going on and what could happen next and when you give the premise of a girl living with the person that murdered her parents you expect high pace and you expect things to happen quickly now on the subject of details and slow at the beginning and fast at the end i actually also recently recently as in back in december read the coldest girl in cold town by holly black and i've noticed that it's just kind of her writing style because the coldest girl in cold town i felt the exact same way now i actually really like that book and i really enjoyed it once again the first like 75% of that book was incredibly slow and it was not something that I was like jumping at the bit vampire pun intended ready to consume and read and know what happened next however once I hit the last 25% I was like holy crap this is amazing in today's reading world people want to consume stories quickly now obviously some people like details over action action over details romance over action and action over everything like everybody likes something different but as a whole consensus people tend to want to know the story over the details although then the whole book versus movie argument gets into it and it's just 
Moving on before I start a war. <laughs> Now, up until this point, we've been spoiler-free. However, I am going to start talking about some spoiler -y things. That, once again, goes for this video. I'm going to start talking about spoiler -thing things because the original video is starting to. And I'm going to talk about the end of the story. So, once again, if you have not read this book in entirety now, please go check out one of my other videos. I honestly feel like Holly Black found every cheesy, corny, ridiculous, ridiculous fairy stereotype ideology mythology whatever anything that could have in the slightest linked back to fairies i feel like she found it and smashed it all into a book and sprinkled a little high school on top now i fully agree with that still i fully 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 agree with that statement now i don't feel as bad about saying that because it's more detailed and descriptive than just saying the story was bad. However, this statement I fully stand by. I fully stand by. It's very cheesy in the beginning and it's very cliche and it finds things that necessarily don't need to go together. Fish sticks being example A. I fully stand by that because of the fact that the second half of the book carries none of those cliches in it a thousand times better than the beginning. There is a way to interpret cliches and stereotypes and these typical things that we all know and care about in a really good way and I just don't believe this video did that. <laughs> not video, I'm talking about the book, not my video. I just don't think this book interpreted and connected those things in a good way. I do believe that there is a better way to do it. Now I'm obviously not the author of this book so I'm not one to go well I should have done this over this and this should have been here and you should have done this over that because it's not my story to tell. I'm just here saying my thoughts and feelings on it but I do stand by the fact that the beginning half of this book carries way too many cliches. Now, I hate saying that. You guys know my channel. I do not diss authors. I do not crap on authors. And I feel so bad about it. I do still stand by that too. I don't crap on authors and I don't diss people because it's rude and disrespectful and everybody poured their heart and soul. And especially now that I'm in the writing phase of my life, that's really shitty to do. This book has so much potential and I understand the whole high school aspect that's sprinkled on top to where they go to lessons and they're getting picked on because they're humans and not fae and I totally get that and I'm totally there for that as well. That's not my problem. Just like not my problem is the fact that Cardin's not as bad as like he seems to be and like there's some deeper darker thing going on that I don't have a problem with. I do like that in the second half of the book Cardin is a much bigger piece of the story. Now obviously saying the cruel prince and then you introduce Cardin and you knew Cardin's the cruel prince and you, you knew he was important and you knew he was a part of it and I did like how things came full circle for him and I really actually enjoyed the fact that Jude kind of like double crossed him because I do think that adds more dynamic to Jude's character because up until this point she was just like an angry teenager taking her anger out on people and being pissed that she didn't get to do whatever she wanted whenever she felt like it. Whereas with the whole Carton situation she was actually given some depth and she was given motivation and reason and actually was given a purpose instead of just being an angry teenager. Now as far as Carton I like the secret depth that Carton has. I like that he is very very protective of himself because of his life and the things he's had to go through and experience between his family like specifically his brothers and his friends and the secret depth of him is very true and relevant to a lot of people and I really did enjoy his character as a whole once we got to know him more which makes me excited to read The Wicked King because I gotta imagine we dive even further into that as I said I have not read The Wicked King so I can't speak to it and please if you have read it no spoilers because because I plan to get to it sometime soon. Then I don't have a problem with her getting wrapped up with Dane and being part of his spies and doing this training or and wanting to be a knight. None of that I have a problem with. As far as the original section that I read, her with Dane is by far like my favorite part because it felt like the story was actually starting to go somewhere and therefore like it actually gave me something to care about and that sounds really harsh but the rest of it was just information I just didn't really attach myself to I guess is a better way to put it. 
My problem is, is that we seem to constantly have a goal and we're moving towards something. She wants to become a knight. Maddox tells her no. She goes into this tournament anyway. Like, okay, fine. Moving on with the story. Okay, fine. Then she's picked up by Dane. She has the ability to not be influenced by other people. She ends up going to school where Val Valerian? I think tries to make her do something she ends up stagnant those are all good arcs for me and I really enjoyed those arcs and her seeing Cardin being whipped instead of being the snarky asshole that he's always been those were all great and then I feel like it all just comes to a stop we have these moving parts and these moving pieces and yet it all seems to suddenly break up because she has to go to lessons she has to go to dinner she has to go here she's doing this she's doing that. If all of those things that I thought were interesting would have actually flowed into each other, I probably would be done with this already. I once again actually really stand by this point and it goes back to my point earlier as far as the action versus the detail. You can have very detailed action without delaying information and I fully stand by the fact that you had these moving arcs that were really interesting and you had her fighting back against Matic and doing these things that were important and ultimately did contribute to the end of the story and they were broken up by her daily life. Now in books you get more of characters daily lives than you do in movies but there's also a time and a place and stories are supposed to go in an arc. You're supposed to start with the introductions and the environment and what things are like and that's the time and place for her daily life and what things are like and all that. Now I understand when it came to her being immune to fey like influence obviously that's very important for her to go back into normal life something happens and it turns out she's immune to it that's important that's important to explaining how she is immune and like that other characters now know she's immune and that sort of thing that part's important but the extra conversations broke up information that was essential to the end of the story and could ultimately have gone without I feel like this story is just a straight up how ridiculous can we make the fairies to the human not a fairies are looking down on the human it's just hey how many times can we bully Jude until she cries and quits and runs away there's no real destination for the picking it's not going anywhere I actually somewhat disagree with that point I understand why the picking was important because it made Jude who she is and it made her so hard externally to the people around her so obviously it was important that the characters around her made fun of her because that was the only way she was going to toughen up and ultimately be able to make the decision she made at the end of the story as far as double crossing Cardin and protecting Oak over anybody else and other things. I understand now why it was important. However, at the 60% mark, it wasn't that important and it was ultimately just frustrating. So maybe that's one of those where a couple of those scenes could have gone away. And also I understand how the picking was important because as far as the murder that Jude does in her bedroom, that obviously makes a lot more sense once you realize like how cruel everybody was to her. Now if they were all flowers and sunshine and happy to her, we would look at Jude in a total different light if she just murdered somebody in her room. Overall though it does seem that my feelings are somewhat the same. I just have finished the book now versus in this video. I do think that things actually had a point and a reason. However I still don't think that this story concept was executed in the best possible way that it could have been executed. Now I'm not saying that I could have done any better. I'm just saying that I believe that there was a better way to tell Jude and Cardin's story. Let me know down below guys what you think of this video format. I actually really enjoyed doing this look back on my old videos and talking about what I thought then versus what I think now. As always guys, like every other YouTuber out there, please like, please subscribe. The only way we grow this channel is if you subscribe. Also, as always, I hope you guys enjoy what you're reading, continue to read, and I will see you next time.